Hi everyone, yeah, my name is Vitaly. I'm a researcher at Ning Foundation. And uh, yeah, let's wait for a couple of minutes. Just uh, send a link to your friends. We'll discuss some security aspects of uh, our L2, ZK sharding. Yeah, and uh, feel free to drop any of your questions in the thread. Yeah, wait in just a minute. All right, so let's start. So what we will cover today? Um, yeah, as I said, we will uh, discuss some security aspects of ZK sharding. Definitely we, will, won't, we won't talk about the whole security model since it's uh, quite tedious. So we will formulate the scope of uh, today's discussion and uh, yeah, just state the problem. So what, what's the issue? What's the security risks? Uh, after that, we will discuss some possible approaches, our solution, and uh, finish with uh, finish with uh, uh, the next uh, directions we are working on that is related to to this uh, particular uh, problem. Okay, so starting from the scope, um, let's imagine you are a user interacting with the, our system. So after you sign transaction, you submit it to a shared mempool, yeah. And then this transaction will be included into block. Maybe some cross shard messages will be emitted. These messages will be also eventually included to block. So at some point, uh, execution of your transactions will be finished. Yes, and then at the first stage, all these blocks will be attested by the main shard. And next, uh, the sync committee the entity of our protocol that is responsible for L1, L2 communication will gather this transaction data and uh, submit it to Ethereum as a data availability uh, for data availability purposes. So that is uh, the scope of today, today's talk. So I want to claim that the security on this uh, time window is probabilistic. What's, uh, happen what will happen after that? After that, the state change proof, the uh, ZK proof for validity of the state change will be generated. Yeah, At, eventually it will be submitted to Ethereum, uh, validated and finalized there. But uh, of course, at this stage, the security is also probabilistic. Like, uh, but uh, the uh, like soundness of uh, ZK proof is. Uh, uh, is uh, like really good. So we don't uh, expect that. So the probability of a failure at this stage is like negligible. But the thread window, I want to claim that um, in sharded system, systems, like not only us, um, the probability of failure can be significant. Yeah, and uh, how come? So say we have a bunch of validators and uh, some of them are honest, marked by black, and some of them are malicious, marked by uh, red. And uh, we don't want to assign each validator to every particular shard, uh, otherwise there won't be any uh, sharding. Okay, So we want to split the state and split the execution into parallel chunks, and uh, each validator should be validating only one or maybe a couple of shards. And uh, how do we assign validators to shards? Like our protocol doesn't know which validator is honest, which is not. So the the best guess is to assign them randomly. And uh, this randomness uh, is uh, 
generated by some random beacon inside of a protocol. So we can assume that uh, this randomness is uh, unbiased and uh, trustless. So having this randomness, we have, so I mean, uh, assuming this, this random seed is random, we can assume that this mapping is also random. Okay, so what these validators are doing, they run some consensus protocol on uh, state updates, so on blocks. Um, this consensus protocol, for example, PBFT has particular safety, uh, safety guarantees. Um, like if uh, everything is good, uh, everything is good if a uh, fraction of malicious validators is less uh, than a third. Okay, otherwise some bad bad things can happen. And uh, in, the, in the scope of uh, sharded system, such kind of attacks is called 1% attack. Because assume you have 1,000 validators and hundreds of shards, meaning that each validator, each shard has like tens of validators, and you can commit corrupt on just a shard and uh, uh, from the like huge validator set that would require like tens of, tens of validators and uh, that uh, makes a huge like impact on the whole system so from coming from this 51 percent attack or you you just uh, boil down to just one percent and that's the issue of the shard system as i uh, mentioned so we definitely want to we want to do something with that problem. Okay, that motivates us uh, to propose a protocol for a detection and the correction of uh, malicious uh, uh, activity. Yeah, some at least some mechanism to ensure that state across shards uh, become uh, stays uh, valid. And uh, the, the scope of this work is just state correction. Yeah. We will discuss uh, state detection at the end, but we will now focus on how and ways how to correct uh, the state. Okay, so let's dive to approaches. Um, the first approach is just uh, to ignore the problem. Uh, what do I mean by that? So we have some protocol with the so basically some black box with the unknown with the known parameters. We can try to tune these parameters, for example, size of validator set, um, and uh, for example, some consensus protocol on a, uh, on the chart. We can tune these parameters to achieve very low probability of uh, such kind of attack, one percent attack. So on this slide, you can see some maybe difficult looking formula. And this formula, the first formula computes the probability to uh, corrupt uh, a single shard, just a particular shard. And the second formula computes a probability to corrupt a shard, just uh, some shard of, uh, of a bunch. And uh, let's plot uh, this uh, uh, probability um depending on the size of shard and also let's plot uh, several uh, lines for different uh, consensus security threshold so previously i mentioned pbft protocol it's uh, one of the like uh, standard uh, consensus protocols it has a threshold security parameter uh equals it equals to a third so it will, would be a purple line here. So you can see for PBFT, like the situation is like quite bad since the pro failure probability is independent of the shard size and equals to one. So you, you can also can always expect that some shard will be, could be um, uh, overflown by malicious validators. And uh, by blue line, uh, where f equals to a half, it could be some synchronous consensus protocol. Uh, the situation is much better. So for example, if you set the uh, 
the size of a shard to 200 validators with the total size of a thousand validators you have five shards and uh, you expect the failure to happen once in a 10,000 years uh, it, it is marked by uh, this horizontal line millennium cluster so sounds uh, much better yes uh, I want to claim yeah that this might not be uh, like as secure as um, it sounds since this probability distribution from which we sample it has um, uh, really strange behavior meaning it is skewed and has uh, heavy tails so we expect with a high probability uh, to fail uh, within several years so this approach might sound like cool but uh, in practice it is not like sufficient to completely ignore the problem okay and uh, yeah as i mentioned uh, we only have five shards uh, in this case so the scalability is not like, very desirable okay so maybe we can indeed uh, we, we can just not try to ignore the problem maybe somehow to solve it and uh, maybe it will allow us to decrease the shard size um, hence increasing probability and uh, uh, making the system more efficient. So the second approach in, involves uh, partial fixes. So assume some uh, a shard will be corrupted. Yeah, malicious validators will uh, gather and uh, will commit some invalid uh, state change. They will send invalid cross shard messages to other shards and uh, these shards also will be corrupted because validators of other shards will just uh, assume that uh, these messages are uh, valid uh, so uh, errors will propagate across the system and uh, we can try to pick these uh, errors and uh, uh, update them so basically add new blocks uh, later that uh, um, revert these updates um, sounds interesting but i want to claim that this approach is a bit uh, too complex and might be too fragile um, because it is supposed to trigger maybe once a year several years uh, from theoretical point of view in practice we, we don't expect this to trigger at all because like e economically motivated uh, malicious validators won't be uh, uh, motivated to, to do that because their actions will be eventually detected and uh, correct so yeah as I, as I mentioned the limitations of this approach is high complexity and kind of fragility and uh, also we can run the simple uh, simulations how the errors will be uh, will will spread across the system and we can see that uh, with the uh, like independent of number of shards like number of initial uh, invalid uh, corrupted accounts so it takes like tens maybe a hundred of seconds to corrupt half of the shards so the errors will be, will propagate quite fast in the system it is due to this snowball effect of uh, error propagation so yeah the, the, a lot of uh, uh, state will um, will have to be updated a lot of proofs has to be have to be regenerated so that solution basically uh, will collapse into some kind of full rollback and uh, that's that's basically what we want to propose just uh, let's uh, make a full rollback of the system since we have this convenient point of um, finalized state yeah uh, at some point uh, some state will be attested by uh, zk proof of uh, validity and we will have this point of uh, finalization and uh, if uh, something bad happens in the uh, in the main uh, main shard we can just uh, initiate a rollback and reset the state roots in the main shard and an execution shard 
Okay, let's dive a bit deeper what's going on on this picture. So on this uh, on the top line we have a main uh, main shard. On the bottom we have a bunch of uh, uh, execution shards. Uh, so we have main main shard blocks and uh, um, just shard blocks. Uh, at some point, at the first step, the uh, rollback will be initiated. It will be initiated by some fraud proof, um, e either like optimistic uh, fraud proof, like an opt optimistic rollups, or just a zk proof uh, that on the execution shard, invalid state was committed. Uh, then the information about the last finalized state will be retrieved. It is located in the main shard, so yeah, it could be done on the main shard. Then the state root of the main shard will be reset. And uh, since in our protocol, each main shard references the execution shard, we just require it to reference back to these uh, finalized uh, sh shard blocks. So yeah, that basically means that we reset the state routes not only on the main shard but on the execution shard. We, as you can see on this picture, we fork uh, shard blocks, uh, shard chains, and uh, finally we slash uh, validators who uh, committed crime and uh, update consensus parameters, meaning reassign some validators. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's uh, the proposal and uh, what's the benefits it uh, so it allows for a smaller committee size yeah if you if we compare with the first uh, solution we don't have to be strict with a very very small uh, probability of a failure since yeah we have in protocol check and in protocol correction for uh, malicious activity so uh, that will amount for some incentive from uh, malicious parties to participate in such activity and we can um, a bit increase the probability of uh, failure but still we don't expect uh, such events to happen since yeah eventually they will be corrected uh, detected and corrected yeah and uh, this approach is just very straightforward and robust so we just roll back and that's it uh, speaking about further directions, so uh, the interesting points uh, we have to address is uh, what's about L1, L2 communication and the interaction with this uh, SYNC committee, as I mentioned previously. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have uh, several ideas how to do that. We can have additional assumption on SYNC committee that it will um, re re resubmit um, deposits yeah after we roll back um, uh, we will require sync committee to resubmit uh, transactions from l1 um, uh, that uh, that is one of the approaches and uh, we will um, uh, go into uh, we will go deeper into what's uh, what 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 can happen uh, but right now we don't see like any big issues um, with the with that uh, integration integration with the Shardak. So we uh, have uh, recently proposed a new uh, cross shard uh, messaging protocol, and uh, we have to integrate this uh, with the with the rollbacks. Uh, make sure that uh, they're compatible. Nothing bad will uh, sh should happen. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have to address the problem of, with the detection. How do we detect? Uh, that means that um, not only the exact mechanism, how we will, uh, in which form the fraud proofs will be present, like optimistic or ZK, but what's the incentive? Who will check? Uh, who will submit the proofs? And we have several ideas. For example, we can require uh, proof generators to do so. So they will have some stake in the system. They will be required to generate proofs for shards, and uh, they will be in there will be in protocol assignment uh, of proof generators to uh, to shards. Uh, there are some issues with this approach, uh, 
and we have several other um, approaches to, to this um, to this problem. And uh, yeah, the fraud proving is just what I just uh, discussed. Um, so that's it from the further directions. And uh, now let's move to uh, questions. So we, we have uh, some questions people asked, uh, commonly asked us previously. Um, so um, how often do we expect to rollbacks, uh, for rollbacks to happen? Um, as I said, we will tune the protocol parameters so that the, like from the uh, theoretical point of view, they can happen like once in uh, several years, but uh, we expect uh, these uh, rollbacks not happen at all because, uh, okay, bridges uh, will wait for zk proofs, and after the zk proofs, no rollbacks are possible. So uh, maybe, um, so I want to claim that there is a, won't be an incentive uh, to for malicious parties to participate in such an activity. Uh, and the, yes, when, so yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, Feel free to uh, ask your questions uh, in the chat. Maybe something was not clear. Maybe some of my claims like sounded uh, um, not convincing. So yeah, uh, any concerns? Mm, yeah, maybe some questions just related to ZK sharding. So once... Uh, um, Okay, the next question, um, uh, what kind of attacks malicious parties uh, can try to perform? So, um, as I said, the malicious validators once corrupted, once obtained uh, um, access to write um, on a state of, uh, of shard, they can send uh, cross -shard, malicious cross-shard transactions to other shards, corrupting the state of the whole system. So they can do whatever, do whatever uh, they want, but they are constrained by this time, time window before um, ZK finalization. So once someone will try to generate a validity proof, they won't be able to to get the valid transaction data, then uh, the, this activity will be detected. Uh, they will, the malicious parties can try to uh, bridge some assets. So they, they can mint uh, a gazillion of tokens and try to bridge it somewhere. Um, but yeah, then bridges will wait for ZK finalization and nothing could be gained here. Um, how do we detect uh, malicious behavior on a faulty shard? Um, that could be done by um, optimistic proofs, for example. We are uh, still not sure that this approach uh, is 100% like valid, uh, but we have uh, rough ideas and uh, it can be done with, for example, ZK proofs but someone will have to generate it. And um, here we have to just be sure that incentives are set uh, sufficiently. So, yeah. Okay. Um, 
feel free to ask uh, questions uh, just uh, we will answer it uh, later and uh, this talk was uh, just an overview of a blog post we recently posted so yeah uh, also feel free to read and uh, drop your feedback and i think uh, at this point we can wrap up so yeah thanks for your time yeah and uh, bye